Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are going to study about the diffraction of light. So this diffraction of light is our wave optics ka ek important topic. Hai. So basically diffraction of light we study karte hai, wave optics. Mein. Okay. So this topic mein, diffraction of light we are going to study. Karne wale hai. So first we will see what is diffraction of light is yes, first we will see the basic definition of diffraction of light second we are going to see about the types of diffraction second is types of diffraction of light what are the different types of diffraction of light and then we will study about the experiment related to the diffraction of light hum log <coughs> interference of light mein ydsc ke bare mein padhte hain young's double slit experiment ke bare mein diffraction of light mein hum log study karenge single slit experiment and this single slit experiment it is basically related with the diffraction of light so sabse pehle hum log start karenge ki diffraction of light hota kya hai so first we will see what is diffraction of light. So let us start with the definition of the diffraction of light. So diffraction of light. Diffraction of light. So basically it is a phenomenon. So we can write down the phenomenon of the phenomenon menon of bending of light bending of light around the sharp corner around the sharp corner sharp corner of an obstacle of an obstacle or aperture or aperture and to enter and to enter into the region of geometrical shadow region of geometrical shadow is known as is known as diffraction of light is known as diffraction of light so just get it into the definition or actual concept about the diffraction of light let us consider an example suppose we have a monochromatic source of light like this we can take suppose here we have a source of light okay or the rays are coming from a source and we have suppose an obstacle suppose this i'm taking the obstacle let me choose the obstacle first suppose this is the obstacle suppose this is one obstacle okay and uh, this is the screen which is just placed behind this obstacle we have one screen which is placed just behind this obstacle this is the screen okay suppose this is the screen which is placed just behind this obstacle then this will be the region of geometrical shadow okay and suppose i am choosing the sharp corner let me choose the sharp corner of the obstacle this is one sharp face of the obstacle this is the sharp face this is one obstacle and we have this screen this is the screen and this is your obstacle it is an opaque object obstacle and this is the screen so basically this region is known as the if this is the geometrical height of this obstacle then this region is known as 
region of geometrical shadow basically this part will give you the region of geometrical shadow geometrical shadow suppose here a source of light is placed here suppose here we have source of light like this okay here we have one source of light here is one source of light okay source of light and suppose this obstacle is illuminated by this source of light then what i can say this region will be free from any light or this part of the screen this part just look at the screen this part of the screen will not be illuminated because this obstacle will just uh, uh, it will be a hindrance in the path of the light which is coming from the source so basically this part of the screen it will be the region of geometrical shadow but only this part will be illuminated so basically this part it will be illuminated by the light which is coming from the source light coming from the source but the actual scene is different from this from the source so when a ray of light which is coming from this source suppose light is traveling in all the direction so what will happen if the light is coming from this source in this direction like this suppose a light wave it is traveling from the source and it is coming now when it is coming to this point this sharp sharp is of the corner then what will happen it will just bend around this sharp corner and what will happen it may enter into the region of geometrical shadow the light is entering at this point and basically this part will also be illuminated so this phenomenon of the light to bend around the sharp corner this is the sharp corner you can see here this is the sharp corner of the obstacle so what is happening here the light is bending around the sharp corner and now it is entering into the region of geometrical shadow and if this light wave can enter into the region of geometrical shadow then this geometrical shadow will also be illuminated by this source of light so this phenomenon of the light is known as diffraction of light now what must be the necessary condition for the diffraction of light means bending of light to occur around the sharp edge of any obstacle or aperture so this condition must be satisfied the size of the obstacle the size of the obstacle means the corner basically the sharp edge the size of the obstacle here means the edge the sharp edge of the obstacle sharp is must be nearly equal to the nearly equal to the the size of the wave size of the wave here the meaning of the size of the wave is the wavelength of light wave or the wavelength of light if this condition of this condition is satisfied then the bending of light will occur around the sharp corner of any obstacle or aperture so this phenomenon of light it is known as diffraction of light it's very simple now so what is diffraction of light so the diffraction of light is the phenomenon of bending of light around the sharp corner of an obstacle or aperture and to enter into the region of geometrical shadow of that obstacle is known as diffraction of light now after this we are coming to now we are going to the next topic that is types of diffraction okay so after diffraction of light we are going to study about the types of diffraction so what are the types of diffraction so basically diffraction we study in two categories types of diffraction of light or types of diffraction so basically diffraction we study into two categories the first one is just you can see it here the first is now we can classify this diffraction of light into two categories so first is one by one i will explain the first is fresnel diffraction of light and the second is fraunhofer diffraction of light so the first diffraction of light is first fresnel 
fresnel diffraction of light and second is front hopper front hopper diffraction of light so let's study about these two types of diffraction of light one by one so basically we will differentiate between these two types of diffraction of light fresnel diffraction of light and front upper diffraction of light basically these types of diffraction of light you will study in higher classes in detail but here in 12th class just we will differentiate between or we will get the basic difference between these two types of diffraction of light first is the fresnel diffraction of light and second is the front upper diffraction of light so first one i'm going to explain about the fresnel diffraction of light okay fresnel diffraction of light okay so in order to observe the diffraction of light what we need so in order to observe the diffraction of light we need these three important components the first one is the source of light source of light second one is the slit you can say or the aperture slit okay or you can say sharp is of any obstacle sharp is of any obstacle like blade also you can take blade has sharp edges obstacle and or you can say aperture like lens or mirror have sharp aperture and third is your screen okay these are the three components in order to observe the diffraction of light first is the source of light any type of diffraction of light second one is the slate or sub is of any obstacle okay or and third is the screen so in case of fresnel diffraction of light the distance between or the source slate and the screen all are kept at finite distance with respect to each other okay suppose like i'm taking the obstacle here this is the fresnel diffraction of light let me choose this fresnel diffraction of light so suppose we have a slit like this you can see this is your slit okay this is your slit and we have the sharp edges of this slit let me choose the sharp is there is a very small hole suppose this is the very small hole here okay you can see it here okay and these are the slits you can see this is your slit okay and this is the surface by the arrow i've shown you this is your slit and we have one screen also this is the screen which is just placed behind this slit we have this screen this is your screen okay and finally we have a source of light and this is your source of light s is the source of light here we have source of light s s is the source of light here so here in such type of diffraction of light or in fresnel diffraction of light source slit and the screen all these three components which is used in the diffraction of light they are kept very near to each other or they are kept at a finite distance with respect to each other then such type of diffraction of light is known as fresnel diffraction of light so this is your screen and uh, this is your source s s is the source of light what is s s is the source of light okay and this is the obstacle so basically this region you can see it here this region on the screen it will be the region of geometrical shadow you can see here this will be the region of geometrical shadow geometrical shadow in the upper part of the screen and this is the lower part of the screen this is the also this will be also the geometrical shadow if the slate is a opaque object okay it is opaque it is not allowing the light of light to enter into the geometrical shadow 
but due to the wave nature of the light what will happen the light wave is coming and it will bend around the sharp corner like this suppose now i will explain here light is coming from this source of light in this direction okay like here it will traveling what will happen it will bend around this sharp corner here it will bend okay and what will happen it will enter into the region of geometrical shadow like this again another light ray or wave we can take it is bending around this sharp edge of the slit and it is entering into the geometrical region this is the geometrical region or region of geometrical shadow so such type of diffraction of light it is known as fresnel diffraction of light in which the source of light slit or obstacle you can say and the screen all are placed or all are placed at a finite distance with respect to each other then such type of diffraction of light is known as fresnel diffraction of light okay now next diffraction of uh, next diffraction of the light so next diffraction of light is from upper diffraction of light so in from upper diffraction of light the slit the screen and the source of light all are placed very far from each other means all are kept at infinite distance with respect to each other so diffraction of light we have another category of diffraction of light that is known as from upper from upper diffraction of light okay so basically here we can give the definition of uh, fresnel diffraction of light so here you can write down in fresnel diffraction of light the source comma the source comma the screen and the slit diffraction source the screen and the obstacle or you can say slit are kept at a finite distance at a finite distance means they are placed near to each other finite distance with respect to each other with respect to each other okay now in front upper diffraction of light the source of light the source of light comma slit and the screen are kept at an infinite distance means very far away they are placed at an infinite distance with respect to each other with respect to each other so in order to show the interference of the light waves which are bending around the sharp edge of the corner we need a lens converging lens so that the rays may converge on the screen and the interference of light may occur so in uh, diffraction of light from upper diffraction of light the source of light the slit and the screen are kept at an infinite distance with respect to each other okay so if the light rays or the light waves are coming from a distant source then all the light waves are perpendic sorry all the light waves are parallel to each other okay suppose source is placed at a infinite distance with respect to slit so let me choose the slit first suppose this is your slit now okay this is a slit and we have a hole having sharp corner or sharp edges this is the slit and we have a hole here we can see let me choose the hole this is the hole here okay and the edges are very sharp the edges of the slits are very sharp like this we can choose these edges are very sharp okay the edges are very sharp and this is your screen a screen is placed at very far distance here i am showing nearby distance but basically the screen is placed at a far distance very far away it is placed like this you can see here this is the screen okay so screen is kept at a very far distance and 
here your source of light is there source of light is also kept at very far distance so here is suppose source of light so if the source of light is placed at infinite distance so all the light waves or the all the light rays which are coming from this source of light they are parallel to each other okay but uh, in the ex if we will perform the experiment in the laboratory we cannot place this source of light at infinite distance so what we do we just take a lens what we do we just choose a lens to make the light rays converge okay so let me choose this lens so here we have one lens here okay it is placed in such a way that it is not coming just wait for a minute yeah here is one lens and this lens is placed in such a way that this source of light is just at the focus of this lens converging lens then what will happen the light rays which are coming from this source of light like this they will become parallel to each other and you will get the parallel wave front okay or plane wave front you will get the light rays now will move like this okay the light rays now move like this you can see it here okay these light waves light waves these light waves you can see it here and the second light wave which is just passing through this optical center without any deviation it will pass and when this light wave will just uh, incident at this sub is of the obstacle then what will happen it will bend around this sub is and it will enter into the geometrical region like this you can see it here suppose it is bending like this it is bending like this again you can see all the light rays are parallel to each other they cannot converse so what we will do in order to make them converse what we will do we will just place one lens in path of this such that the screen is placed at the focus if you will place one convex lens here converging lens you can see it here okay if this convex lens is placed here then what will happen all the light rays now they will converge at some point sorry all the light waves will converge at some point like this okay you can see it there okay then such type of diffraction of light they are known as uh, front upper diffraction of light okay so the basic difference between the fresnel and front upper diffraction of light is that in fresnel diffraction of light the source the slit and the screen are kept at finite distance with respect to each other while in front upper diffraction of light the source of light the slit and the screen are kept at an infinite distance okay at an infinite distance with respect to each other this is the basic difference between fresnel diffraction of light and front upper diffraction of light so after this we are going to study about the experiment which is related with the diffraction of light and the experiment is known as single slit experiment so our next topic is single slit experiment okay single slit experiment and if you have studied about the ydsc experiment then this will be very very simple for you so single slit experiment it is related with diffraction of light diffraction of light okay diffraction of light so in single slit experiment we will first we will see the experimental setup while performing this experiment or any experiment we need certain arrangement arrangement so first we will see the experimental setup of single slit experiment so experimental setup so while performing this experiment these are the components or these are the apparatus that are required and they are arranged in this following ways okay so we have slit like this you can see here we have slit first let me choose the slit so this is your slit yeah 
one slit and we have another slit just below it you can see it there yeah this is your slit and there is a gap this gap or this hole the size of this hole or this aperture is very very small okay and now we have a screen screen also so this is your screen the screen is just placed at a far distance very far away okay so basically we are dealing with the front upper diffraction of light so here is one screen is there okay. and this is your screen this is your screen you can see it there this is your screen and here is your source of light monochromatic source of light you can see it there we have one source of light here monochromatic source of light this is your monochromatic source of light s s is the source of light this is your slate and screen okay and we choose two lenses in order to converse the light rays okay so here we have two lenses you can choose two lenses also let me choose two lenses here convex lenses are there this is your first convex lens okay and we have another convex lens here you can see it there two convex lenses are there now let me draw the diagram okay so f if s is a point source of light then light rays will diverge away from this source of light and first it will pass through the lens one this is your lens one we can choose the first lens and the second lens okay this is your first this light ray it is coming like this and it is passing through the lens and if the source is placed at the focus of this lens then if a ray is passing through the lens and it is coming from the focus then light rays will become parallel to each other okay so these light rays will become parallel like this you can see it here okay they will become parallel like this and you will get the plane wave front at any instant of time you will get the plane wave front like this you can see it here so basically plane wave front will be incident on this slit like this you can draw okay this is your plane wave front here you will get the plane wave front like this okay because these particles will vibrate in the same phase okay this here you will get the plane wave front because all the particles of the light waves they are vibrating in same phase and from the parallel light waves you will get the plane wave front this is your plane wave front these are the light rays which are coming from this source okay and finally they will be incident on this here they will be incident on the slit and when they will incident on the slit they will bend around this sharp edges of the corner or sharp edges of this obstacle you can see it here okay all the light waves they are falling on this hole or this aperture okay and when they will fall on this they will be the plane wave front and after falling on this wave front they will bend around they, after they are falling on this uh, obstacle surface of the obstacle they will bend around this surface sharp edges are there on in the obstacle okay this is your obstacle slit is there and they will what will happen now they will bend like this you can see it here again let me draw the diagram in this way they will bend you can see it there in any direction they can bend you can choose direction any direction you can choose suppose like this they are bending they are coming like this okay they are going like this plane waves are there okay all are parallel to each other you can see it there if all are parallel to each other then clearly i can say they will converge at some point you can see it there they will converge at some point like this suppose they are converging 
you can see it here okay similarly the light waves can go like this also you can see the light waves are going like this okay these light waves are going like this and when the light waves will interfere at any point interference will occur these are the light waves you can see it there from the diagram these are the light waves let me draw the arrow okay you can see it there these light waves they are converging like this here one is converging here other is converging basically infinite number of waves or infinite number of rays are coming the source s okay basically they are traveling in this direction you can see it there from the diagram okay and it will be a plane wave front and each point or each point on a wave front will act as a fresh source of light that is known as secondary wavelet okay so this is the experimental setup of the diffraction of light let me choose some points okay so so let d is equal to slit width the gap of this slit through which the light is passing is d and capital d i am taking the distance distance between slit and the screen distance between slit and screen the capital d is basically the distance between slit and the screen this capital d is basically the distance between slit and the screen and this small d this small d is basically the distance between or the slit width this is the distance d small d you can see it there so one by one we are going to uh, see there these two lenses are there this is your lens l1 and this is your lens l2 okay and slit screen and source of light s s is basically here monochromatic source of light it is emitting the light waves having single frequency mono means single chrome word is basically related with time and reciprocal of time is known as frequency so monochromatic source of light it is emitting the light waves of single frequency only one frequency of light it is emitting now in this experimental setup you can see we have source of light s the slit s and the screen and two lenses are there l1 and l2 and the, all the light rays or the all the light waves which is coming from s and when they are illuminating this slit they will be basically the plane wave front and each point on the wave front will act as a free source of light okay if you have the concept about the plane wave front and the wave front wavelet you can easily understand this diagram this diagram is very very simple now so one by one we are going to study okay so basically interference is there here also interference is there because more than two light waves or two or more light waves they are superposing superimposing over each other so this is interference of light that is coming from the slit interference of light and here is also interference of light and we know what is interference so interference is nothing but it is superposition of two light waves to light waves having same frequency and nearly equal amplitude okay and definitely we know about the two two types of diffraction of interference of light that is known as constructive interference constructive interference and second is known as destructive interference destructive interference so the light waves which are coming from the slit and they are finally falling on the screen if they are adding the effect of if they are adding the amplitude of each other if they are constructive interference means they are in same phase then that point will uh, then that point is known as the maxima or we will get the brightest spot if two light waves or two or more than two light waves 
they are interfering at center point in such a way that they are they all are in the same phase then such type of interference is known as constructive interference and if such type of interference occurs on the screen then that at that point we will get the bright spot is yes, the intensity of light or the amplitude of light at that point will be more than the individual amplitude on the intensity means we will get the bright spot and suppose if the light waves are interfering at certain point on the screen in such a way that they are not in same phase they are out of phase then what will happen they will just diminish the effect of each other means the resultant intensity at that point will be reduced and we will get the dark spot there so we are going to study one by one where we will get the maxima maxima is constructive interference and at which position angular position or linear position on the screen we will get the minima means dark fringes we will get okay because finally the light waves which are coming from the slit that is from the plane wave front and finally they are passing through the lens and when they are passing through the lens they are converging at certain point okay so i will say that if they are converging on the screen at certain point in such a way that they are in the same phase then at that point we will get the constructive interference means maxima maxima means we will get the bright spot of light there and if the light waves which are coming from the plane wave front from the slit and passing through the lens and finally they are superposing over each other in such a way that they are out of phase if they are out of phase then at that point we will get the destructive interference and destructive interference means we will get the minimum intensity of that a uh, minimum intensity of light at that point means minima we will get so one by one we will see the relations between all these cases what is the part difference phase difference and where we will get the maxima and minima on the screen so one by one we are going to study first i am going to study about the central point on the screen okay so at the center what we will get whether we will get the bright spot or we will get the dark spot at the center point so first we are going to study about the maxima central maxima the name is central maxima due to the fact that at the center we will get the constructive interference mathematically we can prove or we can analyze from the diffraction of light so central maxima let me draw the ray diagram and how we can explain about the central maxima <clears throat> so suppose we have this slit here here is one slit by one diagram just i'm drawing this is your slit and here we have one source of light uh, sorry we have a screen and here is your source of light one by one quickly i will explain this here we have source of light s and this is your screen and we have this slit just i told you i'm just leaving the lenses there in the arrangement directly i'm explaining you can refer to the previous diagram so these are the light waves let me choose this slit this is the aperture so just i've told you each point on this slit okay the gap which is kept there the light waves which are coming from the source and finally they are falling on this gap of the slit so they will be the plane wave front and if they are the plane wave front i can say suppose one light wave it is coming from the top point because it is a plane wave front so all are vibrating in same phase all the light waves suppose this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five in fact here we have infinite number of sources of light because each point on a wave front they will act as a phase source of light now i can say if a light wave is coming from one first first source of light and suppose this is your center of the screen center of the screen like this you can see so just look at the upper part of the slit and lower part suppose a light wave it is coming from the upper part and finally it is going at the center other light wave which is coming from the lower part of the slit and it is coming at the center you can see it there they are in the same phase because they have traveled the equal distance clearly i can say this distance because one and five both are in same phase and now they are traveling in same phase uh, sorry they are traveling the equal distance when they will meet at the center they will be in the same phase these two light waves similarly from the light waves 
or the light wave 2 and 4 this light wave 2 and 4 when they are superimposing at the center they are again in the same phase like this so i can say all the light waves which are coming from this plane wave front and meeting at the center they will be in the phase and if they are in phase when they will superimpose they will give the constructive interference so directly i can say the light waves the light waves which are coming from coming from which are coming from secondary wavelet this is known as secondary wavelet this is known as secondary wavelet okay secondary wavelet means basically these are the sources of light just i've explained this will be a plane wave front this is your plane wave front just i'm drawing sidewise and each point on a wave front they will act as a source of light wave front and each point on a wave front on a wave front will act will act as a phase source of light which are known as secondary wavelet known as secondary wavelet now coming back to the explanation the light waves which are coming from the secondary wavelet and superimposing at the center at the center are in same phase are in same phase you can see from the diagram so constructive interference will be there so constructive interference will occur at the center at the center so i can say so center is a point of maxima known as central maxima so from this discussion i can say that at the center of the screen we will get the brightest spot means the intensity of light will be maximum that's why it is known as central maximum i've already explained all the, the light waves are basically coming from